Good morning, Green Acres. How's everybody doing? That graduate recognition was awesome, wasn't it? Man, seeing uh, teachers and nurses and cosmetologists and engineers and all kind of stuff. Here's, here's a, one big takeaway I had. Don't mess with Cameron Tate. Do not mess with Cameron Tate. That was awesome. Congratulations to all the graduates. I'm going to read real briefly here out of Mark chapter 2. It says, when he entered Capernaum, you don't have to turn there. You can follow up later if, you, if you'd like. Chapter 2, when he entered Capernaum again after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many people gathered together that there was no more room, not even in the doorway, and he was speaking the message to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic carried by four men. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above where he was, and when they had broken through, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. I'm going to talk to you just real briefly about the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes is nothing more than a stretcher. We are a stretcher. That's probably a very familiar passage to a lot of you, but it says they brought these friends, brought their friend, the paralytic, to Jesus and lowered him on a stretcher. I'll tell you real quick uh, a little bit about me, a little bit about FCA, and then I'd love to talk to you afterwards. I grew up down in South Georgia, a military kid, went to Valdosta State, Lowndes High School, uh, served in the Air Force for 22 years, had three assignments out here to Robbins, Six years ago, had the opportunity to come on staff with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. My wife Amy's over there. She's also a local Houston County educator. Um, FCA, here's, if, if you don't remember anything, remember this. The heart of FCA are coaches. The heartbeat of FCA are coaches, and here's why. Uh, I, I love to do this. Raise your hand if you know who the president of the University of Georgia is. I see no hands. Raise your hand if you know who the head football coach is for the University of Georgia. Okay, tons of hands. Coaches have influence. I saw Coach Conrad Nix as he was coming into the service. He didn't know I was going to say this. Last year alone, our ministry sent six local high school football teams to FCA team camp in their sport. The reason I bring up Coach Conrad Nix Every one of those head coaches who made a decision to take their team to FCA camp, who you reckon they came up under? Every one of them was a student of Coach Conrad Nix. Coaches have incredible influence. Our ministry strategy is to and through the coach. We want to engage coaches first. We want to, we want to minister to them. We want to engage them, equip them, and empower them for ministry through their platform. They have an incredible platform. So coaches ministry, that's the heart of what we do. Campus ministry is probably what most of you are familiar with. If your students are involved or you hear about FCA on a local campus, we have a ministry presence here in, in middle Georgia on 48 middle school, high school, and college campuses. That's campus ministry. That's a, that could be a big multi-sport meeting, a Friday morning meeting over at Bonaire Middle School where the, where the entire campus is invited. It could be a small team devotion with the swim team over at Warner Robins High School. Campus ministry. It's coaches' Bible studies on campuses. It's team Bible studies. It's us partnering, placing lay people from the church or pastors with a local sports team as a character coach or a chaplain. That's campus ministry. Camp ministry. All of these start with C. Remember, we minister to coaches. We keep it simple. So coaches ministry, campus ministry, camp ministry. I grew up in church. I've been to church camp all my life. I've been to sports camp all my life. Until six years ago, I had never been to such a unique, awesome experiences, experience as FCA camp. Think of the best sports experience you ever had, the best church experience you've ever had. Put them together, exponent times 10, that's FCA camp. We call it a week of inspiration and perspiration. We went from about seven years ago sending about seven coaches and athletes to FCA camp. 
Last summer alone, we sent 749 coaches and athletes, 15 local high school teams to FCA camp to learn how to compete for Jesus in their sport, how to lead ministry on their campus, how to be more of an influence on their campus. Coaches, campus, camps, community sports. Most of the sport happening in, in our counties, it's not happening on the school campus. The last figure I heard, there are 49 million young people under the age of 18 engaged in organized sports nationwide. 49 million. How many of them are doing it on a school campus? 7 million. 42 million are doing it at Little League, rec ball, travel ball, club ball. So FCA is not just a, we don't just want to go on the middle school, high school, and college campuses. We want to partner with Little League. We want to partner with Perry Junior League, with the American Little League, um, all that stuff. It's this same, those coaches have the same opportunity and influence to, uh, or to impact their assistant coaches, their teams, their parents, their families. So that's what we do. Our camp season, which will start here in just a few weeks, all it is is a springboard. It's a springboard to get people plugged back in to a small group. We call them huddles in FCA. Huddle, that's where you just come together, call the play. No one wants to watch a football game where they stay in the huddle the whole time, right? No. This is a huddle right here. This is a huddle. We, all we do is go around a sport and create huddle. We figure out what the play is. Now let's go run it. Let's go run it at Bon Air Middle School. Let's go run it at Veterans High. Let's go run it in your, in your workplace, in your community, wherever you're at. Let's go run the play. Now the why. There's a reason I went to Mark chapter 2. Here's what, FCA is that stretcher. We just lower people to Jesus. At the end of that passage, chapter 12, says immediately he got up, picked up the stretcher, and went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were all astounded and gave glory to God, saying we've never seen anything like this. So if FCA is the stretcher, somebody's helping lower it. It's FCA staff. It's partnerships with churches. Green Acres has been a faithful friend and partner of the ministry of FCA ever since before I came on staff. But we need other people to help us lower the stretcher. FCA staff, church partnerships, volunteers in the schools. We have incredible favor and access here locally. We're one of the last parachurch ministries allowed on the public school campus. It's easy to get, to get fired up about kicking Jesus out of school, okay, I'm going to tell you, you have an opportunity to help stop that. We still have favor and access. Man, find out where your, your students are gathered at on school. Contact their FCA sponsor and say, I'd love to help lower that stretcher. I would love. That would be an opportunity you could have. I want to honor the time that Brother Johnny gave me. Real quick, can I have four of y'all, four of you real quick? Any four of you, just come up here. We got any firefighters in the house? Any firemen in the house? Oh, there we do. All right. Awesome. Bless you. Man, I love first responders. Okay, for the purposes of this, I'm going to use y'all four. Y'all are going to be firemen, okay? That's a cool thing to do, okay? But you got to remember, I'm fixing to give each one of them a responsibility, and I want y'all to remember it. Okay, what's your name, buddy? Justice. Awesome. Justice, your responsibility, you're in charge of all the hoses. Okay? You can't, I mean, the hose is going to be the most critical piece of equipment. It's what we're going to put the fire out with. So you make sure they're in good working order, right? So justice is in charge of hoses. What's your name? Kerrigan. Kerrigan. Awesome name. Kerrigan, you're going to be in charge of all the clothing and equipment that we use. The gloves, the masks, the aspirators, all that. So Kerrigan, you're in charge of what? Equipment, yes. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. Very good. Lauren, you want to be in charge of the fire truck? Yes, the fire truck is awesome. You're going to make sure that that fire truck is ready every time we need it. That's what you're in charge of. How about your name? Marissa. Marissa, man, gorgeous names. Okay, Marissa, you're going to be in charge of the fire station. Okay? 
So you make sure all our supplies are ready, our meals, everything is good for the fire station. Okay. Everybody remember? Okay. So, y'all help me. What's justice's job? Kerrigan, yes. What's Kerrigan's job? What's Lauren's job? Marissa, right? What's Marissa's job? Wrong. On every count. Their job is to put out fires. <laughs> Their job is to put out fires. Y'all did awesome. Y'all did great. Here's my point. It's just a quick illustration. All of us have some responsibilities, but our job, my job, your job as a follower of Jesus Christ is to make disciples. Man, we need your partnership to help do our job. Yeah, we've got some responsibilities, coaches, campus, camp, community, but our job is to reach people for Jesus. It's to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you all. Because as we prepare for our morning offering, can we spend some time in prayer and just ask the Lord for a blessing upon all that he's done so far and what he seeks to do through us and in us now. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you again for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the, first of all, Lord, just the ability to give. We thank you, Lord, that you have been so, so very gracious, not only in salvation, but Lord, so far over and above, you have blessed us. And we ask, dear God, that you would now do what only you can, and that is to work through us, Lord, as we give. Overwhelm each one of us with joy, and we ask, Lord God, that you would have your perfect will and your perfect way in us. Lord, continue to work through us through this worship service and do in us the work that you would have done. And we pray it, Lord, all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together, Reckless Love.
reckless, reckless love that you have caused us to be a part of. We want to thank you again, Lord, for the incredible privilege that it is of ours to be a part of that love. And we ask, Lord God, now that you would do in us, under the leadership of these beautiful children that you've allowed us to be a part of their lives, we ask, God, now that you would do in us the work that you would have done. Lord, speak. And speak boldly through them. We pray it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. This morning we have a wonderful, wonderful privilege and a very unusual circumstance. Our, uh, our children's church, our children's choir, pre kids' place choir director, uh, dating as far back as, as anyone alive can remember. Erlene Miles has been such an incredible asset to this fellowship and the lives of literally every single one of the graduates that you saw this morning, even the ones getting their masters, very instrumental in their lives and dating way further back than that. Uh, two Wednesdays ago, uh, she experienced something that shocked our fellowship. She had a heart attack right in the middle of the practice that they were doing, preparing for this. So she took, went to the hospital, and they looked at her heart, and they said, can't find anything wrong. What's the matter? I don't know, but I'm in a lot of pain. So they sent her home. After a couple of days, sent her home. Had another heart attack the same day. Went back to the hospital. They tested her again. Couldn't find anything wrong. All this being said, all this being said, she said, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I said, we already knew that. Erlene and Sherry Branch uh, have been working so diligently with our older kids of the Kids Place Choir, third, fourth, and fifth graders. And then Betty and Linda have been working with our first and second graders, and some of our third graders even. When this all happened, Caroline Wood and Melanie Hyde stepped right up. Shannon stepped up some. I was able to step in. Julia Gurley stepped in. Abigail Emery stepped in. And so what we have is something very, very different this morning. A choir under the leadership of so many people, if I were to name them all, we'd spend more time introducing them than we would uh, actually enjoying uh, the leadership of these wonderful kids. So children, y'all come on up and y'all lead us through soul on fire.
Bye, Dad. Bye, Fred. Chloe, I know you're here to have so much fun today. You mean Benji and I are going to have fun? Have a great day. Bye. Love you, Mom and Dad. Come on, Thomas. Let's go meet everyone. he should come today. He's very smart. Well, Thomas, we're glad to have you. And to the rest of you, welcome to the Red Hot On Fire Training Academy. We are on fire brigade. <laughs> There's your steer. Awesome! We're going to be a part of the Red Hot On Fire Brigade. Yes. Yes, yes you, you are. are. Excuse me, Chief Edwards. You keep saying on fire. I don't understand. Isn't a fire brigade supposed to put out fires? Oh no, our fire academy is quite different. 
You see, the fire that we learn about isn't the fire you can see with your eyes. It's the fire that God ignites in your heart. I think it will become clear once we take you through the manual. Come on, Brigadiers, let's tell them about the good news. with the gospel of peace. Okay. 
Next, we hold up the shield of faith and put on the helmet of salvation. Exactly. <laughs> and finally, we take up the sword of the spirit. Sparky says to the oxygen. That's like the Holy Spirit. 
Right. The fire in our hearts is just like this. So all we, so we need all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fill our hearts today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Father Almighty, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Father Almighty, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Father Almighty, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
I love to talk to you and hear your voice. I love to read your words, it makes my heart rejoice. I love to sing your praise and worship you. I want to honor you in everything I do. Oh Lord, you're wonderful. As I said earlier, it takes great faith.
Then the king said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for he has saved them and delivered them from the fire furnace. Therefore I make this decree. I went throughout the land much which of the one true living God. Consuming fire was stronger than the flames. Exactly. And what was even more amazing was that Jesus was in the furnace with them. Do you think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could actually see Jesus in the fire? God wants us to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. I want to believe. I really do. It's just, just, I want proof. You remind me of another Thomas in the Bible. They called him Doubting Thomas because he couldn't believe unless he could see and touch Jesus' nail-scarred hands. See, don't you see, Thomas? Jesus is right here. I can see him in the chief and the lieutenant free and in everybody in the station. I want you to know him, too. You came to earth, Jesus, you gave your life, died on the cross, you paid the price, I want them to know of your sacrifice, and if they believe, you give them new life. I want one thing. I want one thing. Share my story, I'll tell them. 
happy for him? No, Rhett, I mean, I'm happy. And I'm happy to finally talk to you. <clears throat> Let's congratulate our new probies and especially our brand new recruit. Come on, Brigadiers. Welcome to the Red Hot On Fire Training Academy. Lieutenant, we have one more training lesson, and this is an important one. It was a commandment. What was the last thing Jesus told us before he went back to heaven? It was the Great Commission. The Great Commission? Let's tell them, everyone. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sound the alarm! Well, readers, we have our marching orders. Let's go! Arlene, can you please come up? We just want to um, take a few moments and thank you for all that you've done for us. We um, like it that you've brought us together, taught us about music and how to have fun in a different way, and even told us, taught us, taught us how to 
do drama class. And for that, we just want to give you this. And we're glad that you All right. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. Ladies, kids, give them one more hand. <laughs>